We back. We back. We back. Nice culture. Yeah. Week three. 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 Four. Three. That was pretty good. I like it. Yeah. Catch me at ISU. I'll be doing the commentary pretty soon. Okay. I like it. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't hey, know if you're some time by yourself every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about solitude. Hey, quit hanging out with people all the time. Yeah. You need a little, 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 a little me you time. time. <laughs> mm, amen. Mm. Let's talk about that. Okay. All right. You want to talk about that? Let's talk about solitude. Oh, That's yeah, where we're yeah, kicking this off, aren't we? Yeah. Are, we are talking solitude. We are talking silence. We are talking you and God and nobody else. Boom. Yeah. What you got, Cooper? What you got? Listen, I, I think that if you look at the scriptures, Jesus practiced solitude a lot. Like the scriptures make a point of saying that. So why do we stink at it as a culture? (laughs) (laughs) And and here's the thing. I, high school students are probably the busiest people I know. I I would agree with that. Like I hear some of their schedules and I'm like, that's not how we're created to live at all. And, and, and um, but I, but I, we're guilty of it too, as adults, just filling our schedules constantly mm-hmm. and not finding time to just be. And, and I think when it comes to solitude, like this is also probably the loneliest generation. Gen Z is probably the loneliest generation, at least in the last hundred years. Mm-hmm. Like you look at what's supposed to increase connection, which is phone, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, et cetera, texting, blah, blah, blah. But, but yet in a, in an ironic twist, everyone's more lonely than ever. Mm -hmm. So solitude, we talked about community in our first podcast with counterculture, uh, like community is important. You need to spend time with people, but there is, we need to follow the example of Jesus where he went and spent time by himself. It wasn't solitude does not mean loneliness. Solitude does not mean isolation. Solitude is an intentional time where you go and you spend time with God away from all the noise. You leave your phone. Solitude does not mean you're just sitting on the couch, you know, on your phone. Uh, it means that you are spending that intentional time in the quiet where you're letting your soul catch up uh, or your body, your soul catch up to your body. You're just letting yourself be restored. So the way here's, I'll just say a way that I practice this. This is how I practice every, every morning I get up, I go downstairs. I'm, I drink a lot of coffee, but my first cup of the day is an intentional, like five to seven minute cup where I grind the beans. I do a pour over. I take that time and make a quality cup of coffee. I grab my Bible. I go out on the back porch and I sit and I, pray and I read scripture. Sometimes I'll read like one verse and just sit there and think and pray. Um, I'll process the day before. Um, I'll process, you know, if I have sins that I need to confess, I'll confess them during that time to the Lord. And that's something a lot of students and, and people don't get is time to process their sins. And that's how you do that is spend time in solitude. But that time for me, it's how I start my day. And it's so important for me. I don't hit it every single day. Every once in a while, I miss a day because I have an early meeting or an early appointment. And that's okay. I just do it the next day. Right. It's not like, you know, it's not the end of the world. Yep. And, but that time is just so important for me. And I just want to encourage our students to def- find time to do that. Yeah, that's really good. And it's just, I don't think we realize how much we need to just stop and like take a moment yeah. and a breath and just like, what you're saying, let our soul catch up to our bodies. Like uh, what are we stink at being bored now? <laughs> we, we just, we want, whenever there is a moment where we've got nothing, it is immediately the phone comes out so that we fight that boredom idea. Yeah. And so our soul never gets to rest because our mind is always on and mm-hmm. being inundated with information and, and media. And it's like, that is not how we were designed to be. Like we were designed in the image of God and, and we look at God and God, he practiced rest. Yeah. Jesus practiced rest. And so yeah. this is important. This is not like an optional thing. You don't, you know, this is not one way you can practice Jesus. This is like, if you're going to practice Jesus, you need to practice solitude. And I, listen, I, I don't like solitude that I'm not good at solitude. I don't like being by myself with, with, without something to keep me entertained. Um, but sometimes that's important. And when we talk about solitude, we're not necessarily saying just to do absolutely nothing and just sit alone, but sometimes maybe that is what you need to catch a breath. Um, 
but it is intentional time away from your, like no phone. Yeah. Away from okay. the noise. No, no media. Noise. Solitude yeah. is not sitting up in your room for an hour scrolling TikTok. Solitude is nothing but you and God and quiet, breathing in, breathing out. And so here's my practical thing to practice solitude that I think is important. You need to have a sacred space. You need to have a spot that you can dedicate as like your holy space where that is where you and God meet. That is away from the noise. That is a spot that you come to and you know that that is where you commune with God and you know that is where nothing else touches that spot, your mind. Mm. Um, and so these could practically, this could be a, a chair in your room. Mm. Um, this could be even a closet to like put yeah, like your, a prayer like, closet. Yeah, a prayer yeah. closet to tuck yourself into. It could be a, a spot outside, like on a bench. Um, maybe it's a spot at school. There's some spots outside to say, I, what, whatever it might be, where's a sacred space that you can meet with God every day. And I would encourage you that that is not the places where all you also watch all the media and you're constantly experiencing noise. Like I, I just don't think living room couch where the TV is and siblings are all getting ready for school. I just don't think that's always helpful because yeah, it's that's not solitude. It's you're not. by yourself. You're not by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So <laughs> what would it, students, what would it look like to practically find a space that you can call sacred? That is where you and God meet and commune together apart from the noise. I think that's a really simple practical way to create a space for solitude and then just start simple start yep. with five minutes mm -hmm. just being quiet thinking about god thinking about who he is and how much he loves you and and just take those moments to practice solitude in those ways so i think it's important it's not always easy again just like prayer that we talked about last week it takes practice we aren't all going to be great at solitude and silence right away but the more you do it the more natural it comes and the more that you find yourself oh man i i needed that moment just to pause and stop and be away from the noise so yeah students i encourage you to practice uh, solitude this week i think it's a great way to to be close to god and we will catch you next time for our next practice here on counterculture Woo.